In this video, we're going to talk about ways to future-proof our smart home. So stick around because we're going to try to automate the boring stuff for as long as possible. Welcome back to Slacker Labs, my name is Jeff. 2021 is the best time and perhaps the worst time to get started building a smart home. After all, the number of choices for affordable smart home tech has exploded in the last couple of years. But if you were waiting for things to become less fragmented before you started throwing your money around, things have only gotten worse. And the long range forecast doesn't appear to be improving. So with all of that in mind, how do you future proof a smart home in 2021? Actually, I don't think you can completely future proof a smart home. The tech is just changing too fast. So let's identify some things that might threaten our smart home's existence, which probably starts with all of our devices. Unfortunately, the biggest risk to your smart home is probably the smart home tech itself. Not only do these devices wear out over time, the companies that make these devices really only get paid when you buy the hardware, which means some of these companies are always looking for ways to convince you to buy the newest version of a device, which sometimes includes bricking the older versions. For me, I try to take into consideration the cost of replacing when I'm deciding whether I should buy the device in the first place. This might be more important if you don't like the idea of messing with your home's electrical system and you're considering adding hardwired devices. Because even if you convince yourself it's going to be a one-time thing, it never is. I think the lifespan for some of these devices is two to three years. And while most of mine have lasted way longer than that, we're at the time in their life where they could fail at any moment due to age. So I think any consideration on future proofing should include how to make switching these devices out easier because there's no way you're going to avoid it. One way I've tried to do this is to make my smart home modular. This could be as simple as avoiding devices and services that don't integrate well with others, or looking for devices that could use a separate hub like the Lutron Caseta to connect to your smart home platform. Adding extra hubs does add more failure points to your smart home, but it does allow you to potentially connect those devices to multiple smart home platforms directly at the same time, like say Home Assistant and Google Home, which can make it easier to switch smart home platforms if your main platform decides to start charging a subscription or go out of business altogether. Given the current rate of change, I think having a modular system allows you to easily adapt to the ever-changing environment. But then again, making a future-proof choice here seems impossible given what's going on with smart home protocols. For the most part, smart home devices have been built on the same smart home protocols for some time now. Zigbee, Z-Wave, and Wi-Fi have all been around for more than a decade, and there are tons of options in each of those categories. But the recent news about matter being on the horizon may cause you some anxiety. Do you invest in Zigbee, Z-Wave, and Wi-Fi, or do you wait for the matter-based devices which are rumored to be coming out at the end of this year or perhaps next? My advice here would be to ignore the protocol hype as much as possible and just focus on automating your house with devices you can get today. Because no matter what you choose today, I suspect there will be support for those devices into the future even after they stop making those devices. This is especially true if you have local control over those devices. There's no doubt that on paper and in some of the YouTube videos that it sounds like matter can bring a lot of unification to the fragmented smart home space. But let's not forget, the Zigbee standard was formed back in 2002 with the idea of connecting devices from different companies into a single low power and secure network to make controlling your smart home even easier. In fact, that's the same vision that Matter has today, brought to you by the same people that brought us the Zigbee standard back in 2002. So I can't help but be skeptical. Either way, I'm not sold yet that Matter's going to bring the unification we need, especially since I don't trust the companies making these devices to put the ease of smart home use over their own desire to maximize profits through ecosystem lock-in. And given that we can already build a unified smart home using disparate smart home tech from different companies speaking on different protocols, with platforms like Home Assistant and Hubitat, I'm even less excited. So my advice here would be the same as it's always been. Focus on a smart home platform that is protocol agnostic. That way you can have as many choices as possible when automating the boring stuff until we can see how the market uses matter. That said, if you're looking today to buy a new network router and there's two of them that you can't choose from, if one of them supports thread, I would buy the one that supports thread. You may use it, you may not, 
but it's there in case you need it. Although, I used that same strategy when I bought a TV a few years back, and I never used the 3D capability. Just be wary of network routers that rely on free cloud services. We all like doing things as cheap as possible. And no doubt, most of us have probably already integrated some free services into our smart home platform. After all, these services are great for expanding the capabilities of our smart home by adding things like weather forecasts, traffic conditions, and even connecting cheap Wi-Fi plugs. But even in those three, there are recent examples where services have switched to paid models or shut down altogether. While paying a subscription to access data or to integrate a device sucks and in no way guarantees that that service will be around forever, I think it does add a little protection that that won't change overnight without warning. So, for any critical service in your smart home, I would consider using a paid version, just for a little peace of mind. After all, having critical parts of your smart home go dark overnight is going to affect usability. I think the silent killer for any smart home is probably usability, because it won't matter how cool your automations are, or how sweet that wall-mounted dashboard looks, if it takes more effort to turn on the living room lights than flipping the light switch that is already on the wall, the switch on the wall is what's going to get used. So I think one of the keys to a long and fruitful partnership with your smart home is making usability a priority. We've all been there before with these old dumb switches, in which you have four switches on the wall and you're having to flip each one because you don't know which one controls the fan. With a smart home, you have the ability to make that problem exponentially worse. If the humans in your house are having to hunt for the right switch to use, or guess at how many times they have to flick that button on the wall just to turn off the lights, I suspect you're going to get a lot of pressure to kick the smart home out. You should also consider what happens when your smart home platform fails, because it is going to fail. For this, I like the idea of having multiple platforms running in my house at one time, like I mentioned back in the devices section. In my current system, if Home Assistant goes offline, I can still control some of the critical functionality of my smart home through Google Home, because those devices are directly connected to both platforms. Not to mention, all of my physical light switches still work no matter what. Also, don't forget to think about the usability of your smart home when you're no longer living in it and create a house account. This isn't so much about future-proofing your smart home as it exists today, but giving you one less thing to worry about in the future. After all, one day I suspect you'll choose to move, and you'll be faced with the question of what to do with all that smart home tech you've added. Do you go around and replace all of the smart switches with dumb switches, or do you just unpair those devices and take your smart home hub with you? Or do you just walk away? This is one of the things I considered when I started hardwiring my smart home tech. And my solution was to create a Gmail house account. I use that house account anytime I need to sign up for smart home services or set up accounts for all of those smart home apps on my phone. For one thing, it separates my personal email and login from these services, which adds a little protection the next time these services have a data breach. But also, when the day comes and we decide to sell this place, I can just turn over the password to these accounts to the new homeowner and they can do whatever they want with the smart home tech. Because for me, the idea of going around and pulling all of this out just because we're moving seems a little more than it's worth, especially since I've learned a lot in the last seven years. And there is a ton of things I would do differently if I was starting from scratch today. For one thing, I would just go with Google for my voice assistant, but that's a topic for another video. So no matter where you are in your smart home journey, try to save yourself some headache and think about the future. That's all the time we have for this video. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.